it's nothing like a Sunday morning coming in with some Beyonce. This is Let Your Voice Be Heard right here on WHCR 90.3 FM Radio, where we love our engineer, Stanley Fritz. Yeah, did you guys hear Selena's going to engineer this show because no, she's I'm so not. excited about the music selection? Stanley, I'm not yes. being sarcastic. You are Stan the Man, the official engineer of Let Your Voice Be Heard. You saw how she got scared just now? She was like, Stanley, I was playing. You pick whatever song you want. Just engineer the show. Please. I love Beyonce. What? Wow. Yes. <laughs> Are you, weren't you tired? Is your mic? Is Patricia's is mic, mic on? on? Okay, yeah, definitely is. Yeah. yeah it, <laughs> it's a little loud. I can't hear it. Yeah, it might be your headphones. Hear, no, I can hear you guys talking. I just can't uh, hear myself. Oh, maybe. Quanta, your mic is never on. That's why you don't hear yourself. It is on. No, that was mic three. Your mic is not on, <laughs> Kwanzaa. No, Patricia. I, don't, I was going to say I don't hear anybody through my headphones. Oh, you don't I hear anybody through your headphones. Uh, this is probably I, the most awkward entrance we've I ever know. had. Oh, I don't sorry. understand how you guys waited until we got on air to ask me about the headphones. Well, not you, not well, you, Selena. No, so Thank you. It's just when I talk that I can hear it. By the way, this is Patricia. And I hope you guys can hear me because I can't hear myself. I can't <laughs> but hear But Selena, what happened? You were so tired a minute before we started. And then you heard Beyonce, and you were just like, oh, you yes, Sunday. Very strategic, Stanley. I told everyone how exhausted I was, and then he put on some Beyonce to perk me up, and oh, it worked. Are, are my name. Still, huh? Can, can are, I do? Are, are we still on this, Lena, about me manipulating that, emotions? That, that is, uh, I am not doing that, okay? The master manipulator. Oh, God. All right. We had a conversation on Friday after um, the Phenomenal Woman event that we did where um, I said that, I tend to be a little bit strategic when dealing with people who are very emotional because I don't know how to handle emotions. And now Selena Nobody is judging me. That. That's not something that you just like know. You just deal with it in the moment. It's different for everybody else. It's so unnecessary. You hear me, right? I- <laughs> But anyways, go ahead, Selena. No, I was just going to say that my name is um, Miss Selena Hill on Twitter, and that's where you can follow me. Shout out to Kawanda, who's also in the building, our events manager. Hey, Kawanda. Hey. And we have a special <laughs> guest in the studio, Danielle. Hey. What's Hi. up? We don't worry. We're not going to press you to talk in the mic. We just wanted to let all of our listeners know who are either watching us or listening to us. Um, who's here today, and we have a great show lined up. Yes, we do. I'm really, really excited. I mean, the topic is kind of a little extreme, but I learned so much. We're going to be talking about, well, I am going to be talking about drones. Yes. The use of uh, drones with missiles attached to them in Pakistan to kill so-called terrorists, and I have a lot of really, really good information about how they work, what they do, what they look like, and everything, and I hope you guys learn. Honestly, I feel very, very different about our president and our government after learning so much about how we use drones and what they're used for. I am flabbergasted. I'm not I'm not sure I um, actually support Obama's administration foreign policy now. Like, wow. Literally, uh, 180. Well, that, that much? Yes, <laughs> that much. <laughs> well, the thing... My issue with drones is, and um, we'll discuss further with expert Patricia. Um, I'm the expert today. <laughs> yes. My issue is the fact that when we keep bombing, um, you know, sending bombs in the Middle East, a lot of times it has adverse effects and it recruits more terrorists um, and it draws more anti-American sentiment. And it's, actually, it's counterproductive. It's counterproductive. And um, I was looking at some, some stats and um, in Pakistan, people um, less favor the u.s government than they did i think before obama started yeah, his administration right. um, really that's yes. hard to do <laughs> yeah they, they favor america even less yeah during the bush administration they actually had a more favorable view of the united states than they do under the obama yes that's and it's sad and what i told oh, you is goodness. what i said i have a completely different understanding okay. of obama's foreign policy now so what exactly are you going to break are you going to break down for us what can we expect in this break down for you? yes i'm going to drop some d's are you guys oh have? yeah she's going to drop <laughs> well, some d's these on us, just like Obama. You know, I have a little thing. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna tell you guys. You know how how we use them, what they look like, what they are, where we're using them, and then I'm gonna explain to you. You know the consequences of them. I'm gonna talk to you mm-hmm. about the casualties that are not always terrorists. I'm gonna talk about beyond the casualties, the injuries, the trauma that they cause, the loss of property damage, of money, of money losses, and the, the lives of the people who live under these drones. Then I'm gonna talk a little bit about. Um, why this, they really don't make us safer in the United States. Mm-hmm. And then lastly, we're going to talk about the legality of this. Are they legal? Can we actually use them? Um, I have enough evidence to suggest that they actually might be considered um, illegal the way we use them and that they could go against humanitarian law. And technically, we can blame Obama for war crimes wow. because of the civilian casualties that they're causing. Oh, wow. And we're going to get even more in depth. 
<laughs> yes. I am so looking forward to that. And then afterward, coming up in the second hour, I will be speaking with a very special special host a very special guest um i really am her name is lisa bloom if you have not seen her or cnn or cbs she was a she's actually a tv personality she had her own tv show she's a a a legal analyst on avo.com she works with high profile cases such as michael lohan um in that case against his daughter lindsey lohan she also worked on the rodney king case so she'll be here helping us break down jordan davis if you have not heard who jordan davis is i'm going to give you more um background information people are calling him the second trayvon martin being that he was also it both him and trayvon martin were both 17 year old unarmed African-American boys who were shot. I think people are do- just doing too much. Stanley, I think- can I break the facts down? You can, but I'm just going to say, I think people are doing too much, and he's not the next shape of Martin. He's Jordan Davis, and it's just sure. a coincidence that he got shot in Florida, too. I- it's not the same. No, 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 well, the thing is that um, what the people, the shooters are saying is they're standing behind the law, the stand your ground law, which is in Florida, which says that you have the right to shoot first before you retreat if you feel threatened, and it does not define what threatened means. So that means if says. I'm walking up, it, still I ha- I can actually read it. I can read the law definition. When we come back from break, you can read the law definition. I don't think. Well, I'm going to read it in the second hour, but that's what it says. It says that you have the you don't have the you have the right you don't have to retreat if you feel threatened. You can use deadly force equal or deadly. equal or deadly force if you feel like you're either going to be harmed, you're mm-hmm. going to have some bodily harm, mm-hmm. or you feel like your life is threatened. Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you can just shoot. That's not what the law says. I just want to be clear about that. Yeah, it doesn't mean that necessarily you can shoot. But if you have a gun, if you're a legal gun owner, just mm-hmm. like both um, George Zimmerman and Michael Dunn. Mm-hmm. You can use that gun. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad law. I think that people take advantage of it. So why don't you think it's a bad law? So we'll, we'll talk about that about later. This on the second half. Okay, I yes. I think the law has loopholes. How about that? No, it's a horrible law. It's how about that? Yeah. And um Stanley, what's going what are you gonna talk about? Um, during your quickie in the second hour. Selena is so mad at me. I can see it in her face. We are going to be talking about the fiscal cliff and why it's not a fiscal cliff. Like I think Kwanzaa said on Thursday, it's a fiscal slope. Yes. And I'll explain to you guys exactly skiing. what that is. Yes, we are going skiing to oblivion. So keep tuning in. This is Leia Voice Be Heard. We will be right back with our host slash expert, Patricia Valle. Valoy. Oh <laughs> I'm so sorry, Patricia. We're I got going, her name wrong again. We're going stop. She never says my last Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style
WHCR 90.3 FM New York Gangnam I can help myself. I love really cheesy songs from other countries. I'm sorry. Um, so thank you for playing that. Was it for me? That Is was really for my it, life, because, honestly. Because it wasn't what I asked you to start my segment with, but that's okay. <laughs> no, that's that's not that's that that song was just for my life, honestly. Um I saw it on a show on Thursday and I went to play it. Mm-hmm. Well, yes. good song choice yeah, for well. Patricia. Guys. Yes, yes. Guys, yes. if you're just tuning in, this is Let Your Voice Be Heard on WHCR 90.3 FM. This is Patricia here. I'm gonna be hosting your first hour, and you guys are gonna be asking me lots of questions. I hope I can answer all of them. I read a 190-page report over the weekend because I really, really did. I thought I knew a lot about drones, the use of drones uh, for counterterrorism in the United States. It turns out I didn't really know as much as I thought I did. And um, I did not have a guess for this segment, and it turned it out to be one of the best things that happened to me because it allowed me to do research that I wouldn't have otherwise. I would have just kind of uh, written some questions. So I'm really excited. So I think that I'm, like, almost an expert on this. So if you guys have any questions or any comments about drones, and I'm going to be focusing on Pakistan, you can call us at 212-650-6903. So let's start with this. Let me, let me, let me scroll up here. Um, a little background. Uh, The United States have been using drones to do targeted killing of so-called, I say so-called because sometimes they're not, Mm -hmm. terrorists since uh, the Bush administration began using them in Afghanistan after 9-11. When President Bush left office in 2009, the U.S. had carried out about 52 drone strikes in Pakistan. Uh, Since then, President Obama has carried out more than five times that number, Mm. about 340 strikes in only 3.5 years. It is his preferred method of killing. That sounds horrible, but it is preferred method of um, targeting what he calls terrorists. So do you guys know what drones are? No. Please break Do it down, I thought, Patricia. Like, <laughs> aren't they like the missiles from the, in the like the um, computer automated planes or something like that? Um, they're not missiles, right? We put missiles on them. So drones are an aircraft or a balloon, actually, mm-hmm. believe it or not, that does not carry a human operator and is capable of flight under remote control or autonomous programming. So we can put program on it. We can say like you give it coordinates, and it'll go to it. Um, This technology is not new. Like I said, um, it it could be a balloon. So this is something that, you know, it dates back a long time. And uh, drones have actually been used as early as World War One Mm. for American American counterterrorism. They were usually um, they're used for aerial photographs. So, um, you know, you you mount a a camera on them, you send them coordinates and it will go and it will take pictures of that area. Uh, these small, inexpensive, they're very inexpensive because they're tiny, mm-hmm. and lethal weapons, the way we use them now are as weapons, because they we mount a missile on them, and then we program it to shoot mm-hmm. at the target. Um, with a camera, then we see the target, we shoot at it. Are currently used um, in Pakistan, in Yemen, in Sudan, and Somalia. But like I said earlier, I'm going to focus on Pakistan because it is where most of the recent drone attacks have occurred. And we also, I don't know if you guys remember, Dustin led that segment. We spoke about drones in Yemen. Yes, I remember ago, that. Right? So and there's a difference? No, it's the same technology and it's the same exact way they're using. But lately, there's been an increased amount of using them in Pakistan. Mm. And their government is um, really, really talking about them negatively. You're saying that... Um, they've been causing a lot of civilian casualties, even a lot more than have been going on than we thought before. So they were the one that put this on the limelight of like, guys, they're not only killing terrorists, they're killing a lot of other people. Um, Do you know what a drone looks like? I've never (laughs) seen one. I just seen the results. You're lucky if you've never seen one. Um, Drones, they look like baby airplanes. So you're lucky because why would you want to have a drone over your head flying, buzzing over you? Very likely they're, they're doing surveillance or they have a missile on them and they're targeting, they're looking to see unusual activity so they can target it. We use them in the United States. They're not only used abroad. The United States uses them um, domestically for um, surveillance. Um, 
there's been big push actually to use them in the United States for um, like the NYPD. You remember the big deal with uh, the NYPD going to New Jersey yes. and surveying Muslim people? Yeah. They wanted to use drones to survey them. Whoa. Yeah, they really did. And it would be like, oh, you that's know, extreme. No guns. I don't think so. But you you, know, don't, you think that's okay, cameras. Stanley? Yeah, yeah, honestly. But they will go over in it. But there's a lot, so, a lot of goes because it's like, you know, it undermines your sovereignty, your freedom of to walk down the street. And it, not just, it doesn't just contact, um, follow the individual that it wants. It follows absolutely everybody. So yeah. every, all your actions are going to be recorded and could be used against you. I, so there's a lot of talk about them. Yeah, but it, like, more or less it's happening anyway. So, I mean. <laughs> you are being watched. It's like, yeah. it's like Big Brother times 100. Oh, my <laughs> God. Much. The only this difference is, so is our, the drones here aren't going to, aren't programmed to kill us, I don't think. Unless, they could. Eventually. Unless they get hacked and it's like, get Stanley yeah. now. <laughs> Get them. Well, like I said, they're they're like they look like a little airplane. I didn't know that. I just learned that they look like a baby airplane. Uh-huh. So like a remote control, and they're about twenty seven feet in length. So they're like slim and long. Okay. And um, where are they? They weigh about a thousand pounds to eleven thirty, about like that. They're not that. They're not that heavy considering their you know, machinery. They're not. That's yeah. not heavy. And um, the good thing, good in quotation, is that they can spend twenty four hours, seven days a week on air doing surveillance, like over and over. That's that is good. And they like that. Well, yeah, it is, but not for people, like I said, people living under them. Yeah. <laughs> <All> the <time. laughs> not for the civilians that just see <laughs> random drones yeah. over their head and they know they're not but, terrorists. But I mean, it's not just getting civilians, it's getting terrorists, and it, it gives us important intel, too. Let's well, not ignore that. Well, and I'm going to, and I, I'm going to definitely talk more about them, and you're going to see that the drones, like I said, the best thing that, that they say is that they're, they're so accurate. They're not quite as accurate as we claim. As President yeah. Obama keeps saying that they are. Yeah, um, I didn't believe that. They buzz. They cause a lot of anxiety for people. Wow, and things like that, and they people feel like they're being watched. So, yeah, I know. would too. Well, you are being watched. I yeah, guess. you anxiety. You know. <laughs> so yeah, no, and, and and they do. They really are effective in what they do if it's done correctly. That's the problem. They're not as um, efficient as we like to say that they are. Yeah. Um. You know, while, while doing research, I found that drones are damaging and counterproductive um, wow i do believe that you know we must protect ourselves and pakistani civilians from the threat of terrorism there's no denying that the pakistani government believes that um but the use of drone strikes definitely has to be reevaluated. the way that um we target people and events and things that's what happens that's the problem so it's not the problem it's not using the drones you can go right ahead it's a very good military tool it's very cheap you don't have to send uh, military personnel into combat into these areas that are really hard to reach you send this tiny little airplane it's a remote control wow. you're from a base you are checking out what happened and you can target whoever the individual is that you want to kill yeah go ahead um no, i just wanted to say this is a really interesting discussion my brain is brewing um and if you guys have any questions on u.s drone strikes in pakistan or the middle east call us up now to one to six five zero six nine zero three or you can tweet us at be heard underscore radio we're talking about the u.s drone strike the fact that the obama administration has increased their use of drone strikes yep. and where does this leave us absolutely thank you for that for plugging in the number you're good at that you're good at that yeah <laughs> and also i want to get people's opinions what do you think about this exactly. I, I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing yeah i want to see if anyone else is on my side with this one we aren't um, that's well that's <laughs> fine no wait. that's fine let's but let's have the conversation um well like like I said, I said um, my opinion on this is that the use of drones, the way we use them now, should be reevaluated. Not necessarily that they're a bad tool. Hey, to have a computerized place to use in warfare, it's very, very good thing. We don't have to send our personnel. It's um, it, it has a lot of benefits. But um, research has found that the casualties of to civilians and the anxiety that they cause and all the damage, yeah, um, it's. Like I said, counterproductive. I keep using that word. It's just counterproductive. It looks like it's going to work, and then it doesn't. And it's, um, and it's counterproductive because it draws more um, anti-American sentiment. It does. It makes them, them. Then we wonder why there's so many terrorist plots and people hate us and want to kill us. And, well, and um, there's a... Actually, I have this report. I'm sorry, Stanley. Mm-hmm. But it has graphs in the back. And it actually shows um, the levels, uh, how many strikes we've done, like drone strikes in Pakistan. And then it shows the p- the peaks in mm-hmm. the most amount of people that we've killed with a stroke usually is followed by a terrorist threat, like the car bomb in Times Square yeah. or the underwear bomber and things like that. Mm-hmm. And usually there's like this sentiment and somewhere in the world. There's like something. And it's just like literally following right after there was like a lot of deaths, especially a lot of this with civilians. Oh, can I? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Let, let's put a num- let's put a number behind this now. I mean, let's if you can, if you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So on average, that we use drone strikes. What would you say the average amount of innocent civilians well, that are affected by it? 
the U.S. rarely acknowledges that drone strikes kill civilians. Yeah. Um, finding data is, it was incredibly difficult because, first of all, it's top secret, obviously. Yes. Um, and getting data from the Waziristan region, this is uh, a region that's in Pakistan, but it's right next to Afghanistan. When we invaded Afghanistan, a lot of these Al-Qaeda Taliban members crossed over the mountains into Pakistan. And this is the, Wazir- the Waziristan region where there are now. Um, it's, it's an Al-Qaeda hotspot, like I said. And it's very mountainous, very difficult to reach. So it's very hard to get data. Like not, people, you, you can't just go there and be like, hey, let me know what's going on. Um, the Bureau of Investigative Journalism reports that from 2004 to 2012, drone strikes have killed 3,325 people in Pakistan alone. Um, of those, 884 were civilians, 176 were children. Mm. Um, and Wait, then, so hold on, 884 were civilians? Civilian people, yeah. 3,000, and not at 884, yeah. how much were children? 176 were children. That okay. was uh, that was in an attack on a school. In one attack, 176 no, children six, died? 69 children in that attack, 84 people died. 69 of them were children. It was a school. There were, there were children that were, you know, like little babies. They were like kindergarten age. And uh, we just took them out. The, uh, WikiLeaks show that um, P- General Petraeus, he ca- he plotted with the Pakistani government to lie about it and tell people that it was a mistake by the Pakistani army because they felt that if uh, the Pakistani army said, oh, it was our fault, it was a mistake that we made, we apologize, that people wouldn't have backlash against American. But WikiLeaks showed the cable and it actually was not true and it showed that it was actually an American uh, drone strike on that school for no reason. They just assumed that there were perhaps a meeting going on there at the time with terrorists. So we plotted um, to, to bomb a school? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah, my I'm goodness. And, um, you know, Hold like, on. this number sounds big. You could be like, oh, my God, well, we killed 3,000 people, and it's only 884, which is, I, I don't like to say only, but people say that. But the reality is that this number, this 3,325 people, they're not all, they're not terrorists. <laughs> we say civilians because they're not members of anything. Um, and actually, this is a, the number of civilians, the way that the President Obama administration says that is just literally people that are not male of military age um what happened what happened you can't hear me you can't hear oh me? no I'm, hear I'm so sorry <laughs> she was like i know i'm sorry Patricia. no that's all right that's all right um oh but, well another number is that about uh 1300 people have been injured you know they lose their legs and things so this is the issue with this number we say, like, okay, if uh, we killed 3,000 people and only 800 of them were civilians, uh-huh. then we've killed a lot of terrorists anyway. Yeah. And, you know, so what? Let the U.S. decide that a few people, a few women and children that die is worth the cause. Uh, but the U.S. calls people who were killed militants. Mm-hmm. Um, most of these militants killed by drone strikes have been actually low-level terrorists. Uh-huh. Um, only about 2% of them were, dr- uh, were actually high-level and only 49 of the 3,325 people were actually Taliban members. 49 of them. The rest of them were just, um, let me see, I have the, the definition, what the Obama administration considers to be people that are okay to kill mm-hmm. are all military age males mm-hmm. killed in strike zone to be, com- they consider all military age males killed in strike zone mm-hmm. to be combatants unless there is explicit intelligence posthumously proven them innocent. Right. So after they die, somebody has to come and be like, let me prove to you that this uh, 18-year-old guy that died was not actually a terrorist. All right, real quick, guys. Um, you wanna, if you want to chime in, number is 212-650-6903. Again, that number is 212-650-6903. Are you okay with the price that we pay for war? I want to know you guys' opinions on these drone strikes. Tell me if you're for or against it and tell me why. Go ahead, Pat. Tell me why. <laughs> can, can I, yeah, I am so upset right now because... Um, I told you. <laughs> a recent uh, a video emerged, I think about two weeks ago, of Obama in 2004. He was speaking in a Barnes & Noble's um, store in New York City, and he was speaking about the best way to approach fighting terrorism. And right. he said, we need to increase diplomatic solutions. We need to offer um, different um, countries more opportunities for upward mobility. This way, they're not, you know, plotting to kill. It's just different when you know, when you value your life and you know that you're going to, you know, you have a higher education, mm-hmm. you can make money, you can afford um, different, you know, just 
resources for your family, it's everything is not about kill, kill, kill. Yeah. And the Obama was saying this is what he believed in in he 2004. Does. He believed that this is the best way to kill terrorists, and only two percent of the people killed have been terrorists. The so, rest so are just but male, I, a, military age males. But that he I'm, considers them terrorists. I'm re- no, I'm really confused because in 2004 he was saying we need to in order to fight terrorism we need diplomatic solutions. That's now not, it's not and, diplomatic. <laughs> yes, and now but now he's in office and we see increased drone strikes. So like my question is for Mr. Obama, are you more center of the left than we thought? Or, 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 but he seemed passionate. He seemed convicted. When he used to talk about well, the quote-unquote war on terrorism, he used to say, first of all, people aren't, he, he said, I think, how did he phrase it? It wasn't people aren't terrorists. It was like terrorism does exist. Like, he just knew how to detach terrorism from cultures. I think, well, uh, that's a that's a government thing. That's a politician talk. You know, oh, they, they have to talk to you in a way that makes you feel that they know what's best and they understand the difference. But in reality, a lot of times uh, it comes to a decision that they have to make. They just have to say, like, well, um, a decision. Maybe it's fine if we um, if some people get in the crossfire if, as long as we end up having an ultimate goal that is better. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I guess I'm just different on this, but what do you expect? We're at war. There's we're not at war with Pakistan. No, no, but we are at war. We're dealing with an enemy. We are so maybe, maybe categorically we're not at war per se, but we're Which dealing. Which is why they could be considered we're, war crimes. We're dealing with an enemy. We're dealing with people who want us dead for whatever reason. I'm not, I'm not going to get into that. What do you What do you expect for us to do? I mean, so you don't want to go to you don't want us to go to war. Wait, wait you mean you? You asking me? No, no. I mean, oh. like, this, this, this is just in general. This is just oh, okay. in general. I was like, like, I don't know. You know, you, you don't want you don't want. People, you know, you don't want your sons and your daughters to go to war. You don't want to pay for more money in, mil- in military spending. But then now you don't want drone strikes. Listen, war is ugly. War is dirty. Battle is oh dirty. God. Someone's going to have blood on their hands no matter what you do. We were mad at George Bush for the way he approached things. And I were mad at Obama for drone strikes. Listen, I'm not happy about 884 people dying or 160 plus children dying. I'm not. But I do understand. Only in Pakistan. Right. It's only in Pakistan, which means there could be, there's more. There's definitely more well, in other places. Well, there's more to it, like I said. Yeah. It's arrow, but, but it could be illegal. But it's not black and white. This yeah. is not some Mel Gibson action movie where he'll blow up an entire factory and all the innocent people had um, 20 minutes well, to get out. Well, That's just the, the way thing. it is. Well, it like, kind of is what's going on. You know, no, and let me, uh, a few more things that happened. A lot of witnesses say that the U.S. <laughs> the U.S. is actually learning from terrorists how to kill people. Um, terrorists use this technique. It's called double tap. Um, if you ever read news about, um, especially suicide bombings in, like, buses, there's uh, the initial bomb that is usually not that big. It kills only maybe several people. And then when rescue workers and first responders come to the scene to help those people, a second larger bomb is detonated. Whoa, that's Hunger Games. Um, exactly. Really? So, that's called double yeah. tap, and it's a technique that is that. used by terrorists. Even the mafia <laughs> does not use double tap. But um, that we've been using that um, in, in this technique to they can make sure to kill people. And what happens is that we're killing innocent people because you see a drone strike. People run to it to go help, including sometimes NGOs that just want to help. And then um, more innocent people get killed. This is usually how innocent people get killed. But anyway, <laughs> you're like, look at me. I'm like, I know. We'll be right back. And actually, when we get back, I have a clip to show you. And I have a couple examples of people that have been in the area of drone strikes to talk about it. We'll be right back. This is Let Your Voice Be Heard on WHCR. Sometimes I think sitting on trains. Every step I get to, I'm clocking that game. Everyone's a winner. We're making our fame. Bonafide hustler, making my name. Sometimes WHCR 90.3 FM, New York.
Listening to Let Your Voice Be Heard. Today, this is a topic. Let's talk about sex. How do we handle this issue? There are a lot more risky behaviors in drinking or drug use that affect sexual activity. In my build a community, the police officers make more of an attempt to talk to people. They're going to be people who just don't like the cops. So when we have our guns, then, you know, what's the solution? Do you welcome homosexuals in your church, Pastor? I'm never going to treat you differently. Never going to put you down. I'm going to say this to you, though. I'm not gay. <laughs> <laughs> They're not stripping or searching or frisking me. Your voice be heard radio. Every Sunday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Yeah. Here, are you no, talking about no, well, a targeted person yeah. here? No, 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 no. That's not, uh, but I'm, I'm, uh, if you go to the village of Al Majla in Yemen, uh, where I was, and you see the unexploded cluster bombs, and you have the list and, and photographic evidence, as I do, of the women and children that represented the vast majority of the deaths in, a, in this st first strike that Obama authorized on Yemen, those people were murdered by President Obama on his orders because there was believed to be someone from Al-Qaeda in that area. There's only one person that's been identified that had any connection to Al-Qaeda there. And, and 21 women and 14 children were killed in that strike. And the U.S. tried to cover it up and say it was a Yemeni strike. And we know from the WikiLeaks cables that David Petraeus conspired with the president of Yemen to lie to the world about who did that bombing. It's murder when you, it's mass murder when you say we are going to bomb. Mass murder. That, uh, I wanted to wow. show you that clip because I felt like he had such passion talking yes. about it. Um, previous to where, where I started that, a man interrupted. And he, he was talking about, like, this is an example of, uh, you know, we have the police coming into a mall. And they're looking for one guy. And they, they spot him in a distance. And because they don't want him to get away, they start shooting, shooting, shooting. They might kill 20 people along the way, but they get the guy. And that's kind of, he was saying, that's kind of how drone strikes work. Wow. And this man is just like, well, like, like Stanley, well, it's not a mall, though. I mean, you know, it's a, re a mountain region with terror. And the guy's like, you know what? And he got really upset. And he's like, if you've seen what I see, you wouldn't say that. Go ahead. That's true. And it's such a controversial issue, um, U.S. drone strikes, because you have the two sides, like Stanley says. What else do you want to do when we're fighting a quote unquote enemy? And then it's like, but hey, all these innocent people are dying. I just want to know, um, everyone out there, what is your opinion? What is your take on the U.S. drone strikes? The number is 212-650-6903 or tweet us. We got Kawanza on our social media feeds right now. You can tweet us. You can Facebook us with questions or comments at um, facebook.com slash let your voice be heard or be heard underscore radio. Um, You're going to keep doing that on my like it. Keep going. <laughs> Go ahead. Yo, I may like the fan page today. Um, <laughs> No matter what you do, someone is going to die. I just want, I want to be very clear about that. Someone is going to die. I don't understand the criticism of Obama or Bush or any president who makes a decision to try to protect our country when no matter what you do, someone is going yeah. to die. Well, it's debatable it's, whether they protect us, but you, you have a point. You're right. That, that is debatable. Yeah. To protect well, and, them, I, and I'll have more information but, later about you know, that, about this whole um, idea of safety. Yeah, I think people need to understand, like, you know, I, whatever you know, way we need to find an enemy, I'm all for it. That's um, that's that's my stance on it. That, that really is my stance well, on it because a question, because here's, here's why here's why because if well, a <laughs> if a nine eleven happens again, then everybody's gonna be like, why why weren't we doing something? Well, what if that means um, investigating or the, putting you, yeah. your family, and people that look like you under under um, well, surveillance? The, the issue here is not it's not that it's a problem that we do counterterrorism. Nobody here is like I've been saying that from the beginning, and he. The problem is that what we're how the way that we're doing is not effective. They've only killed two percent of terrorists, of actual terrorists that we can say they were a threat to the United States. Two percent is not so, a very good it's ineffective. It's let's go back to stop and frisk what you were saying one time. It's ineffective. To say that you you know, you you frisk, you know, a thousand yes. people and only one of them, you know, has a gun or whatever. It seems a little bit like is that was well, you know is that productive enough? We can do it so better. That's why yes. you know, it's debated. We can do it better, and we should do it better. Um, you know, another thing that I was talking about is like international law experts actually say that um, strikes on first responders may constitute war crimes if it's indeed done. Um, uh, on purpose, like I said, um, we were talking about that double tap thing that they learned from terrorists and we start um, using them. And I have a, like a little, is it, she's a humanitarian worker and she's in this area. And she says, um, do you remember 9-11? Do you remember what it felt like right after? I was in New York on 9-11. I remember people crying in the streets. People were afraid about what might happen next. People didn't know if there would be another attack. There was tension in the air. 
This is what it is like. It is a continuous tension, a feeling of continuous uneasiness. We are scared. You wake up with a start to every noise. So this is kind of like what it is because it's continuous, especially that double tap. And now humanitarian um, uh, organizations in this region, they have a policy that they don't go to the area of an attack, even if it was like a school. It doesn't matter um, until six hours later. Uh huh. Um, like I said, because and it's it's a horrible thing because I said they're afraid uh, that they might get. And first responders are not obviously terrorists, and a lot of them have been killed. Wow. Trying to go help. Even the first responders. And um, yeah. Well, that's the problem, and this is where the reality of it comes in. It's like if the United States is a drone strike, like a drone has a camera, so we look at it and we see it. Um, if we see first responders coming and then we shoot a second one, that's a war crime because we know for a fact that those people are not terrorists, yet wow. we still target them um, because they might be helping people that were terrorists. But we don't have better intelligence. Why do we have to go on assumptions? Why do we have to go on people that or, or uh, people because that might be in a school? They might be having a meeting in a school. Let's bomb the school. They might well, have some connection. Come on. Th- like This is where that falls into place where Stanley is like, well, we got to keep them safe. And it's just like, exactly. We should and we should find a way. Um, but the way that we're doing it now is not, the bo- it's not working. It's yeah. not. And the bottom line is it's not keeping us safe because really? it's counterproductive. Like, what was the last time we 2%. had a 9-11? Stanley, like Patricia, was, she was just le- dropping all the statistics. It only works 2% of the time. We need a better way. Really? What was the last time we had a major terrorist attack here? You don't know that. We've only had that once. I mean, we, most of the terrorist attacks that we have are actually domestic. When was the last um, time we've had a major terrorist and, attack here? Like for Planned Parenthood we, and things like that. We don't, is there statistics saying that we never ha- we didn't have another um, major attack because of drone strikes? No, no. Not, so. there's not, that's not even true. Patricia yeah. just said that. All right, there's none. But, okay, so, so let me ask you a question. So if we start doing these drone strikes, how do you, how do you propose that we, but look, we, but the we handle is, these, the people who want to who yeah. attack our country, who don't like America, well, who don't like Americans, who will attack? How do, we, how do, we, how do you propose you we keep, handle that? You guys keep jumping into, like, you know, I have a flow and you guys keep jumping in it, so let me go jump with you guys. Um, the, the issue here is not whether we're uh, safe, uh, protecting the world, the U.S. now. We might. We might say, like, oh, well, we killed that guy who had a plot. Uh, but children grow up with the A lot of these people in this region, they don't go to school. They don't have a lot of schooling. And they've never heard of the United States. Like, if you go and you interview these people, they, they live in mountain regions that actually are closed off, even from mainland Pakistan, for half of the year. So they do not actually have any access to this information. You go there and you ask them, do you know what the United States is? And they don't know what the United States is other than, are those the are those the people that send the drones? Um, and there's video clips, and I have it, and I didn't show it because um, it's in Pakistan, like in, in their local language, and it was dubbed, so I couldn't. It wouldn't have had the same effect. But people talk about it like I don't know what the United States is, but all I know is that they they have a war with us. So um, <laughs> the Taliban and Al Qaeda are using this technique to recruit young men into their cells. So now it's like. Um, they're, they're, they're using, it's like the Guantanamo Bay. Remember when we just took all these like 800 people and we were just like, they might be criminals, uh, they might be terrorists, so we're going to put them in jail. And then Taliban started using that as like, you see what they're doing to us to recruit them? So this is now what they're doing in Pakistan. And even the Pakistani government is just like, this is not working. Now they have a way, they have a reason to get into this children's mind and tell them like, that's your enemy. You see those, because they hover, by the way, and you hear the buzz like, all day long. You see that? That's your enemy. We should fight them. So that's what I'm saying. Like, okay, we might be protecting them now. When those kids grow up, they're going to be like, they might be the next Taliban or the next, you know. We like, are know. creating. We are responsible yeah. for creating, so, creating the Taliban. Which, all right. Which is why we do that thing where we, um, we, we talk to the government. We're like, can you say that you did it so it doesn't look back on, bad on us? All right. So before so, yeah. we picked up the... The use of drone strikes. So what created the Taliban to attack us at the Twin Towers? Oh, well, we have this, uh, a lot of policies. Yeah, go ahead, Kwanzaa. Um, That's a great question, yeah, though, Stanley. Are you talking about the first attack or the second attack? Because there were two times. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. You're right. You're right about that. So, so we can talk about we can talk about either so, one of those. And, and I've, I've been holding my tongue go because <laughs> when people, and I'm, I'm a New Yorker. I was in school the day of 9-11. I felt the pain. My, my school was on Jamaica Avenue. Everyone knows the population over there. Mm-hmm very heavy Middle Eastern. I've seen these people attack since day one who had nothing to do with it. I do not like when people use 9-11 as a reason for us to attack innocent people because if you look at the paperwork, even from our U.S. government, 
9-11 is a st- sticky topic, and it's just been a Band-Aid, mm-hmm. an excuse to use a lot of military defense on other people. Now, getting back to these, the, nine, the attacks on 9-11 and prior, there were policies that we had in these, compa- in these countries mm-hmm. that made them hate us. Um, Pol- our policies, policies have been terrible to them, yeah. Uh, and and it, through the execution of these congressional policies, um, whether it was taking, <laughs> sorry, whether it was ta- dealing with oil, money, um, yeah. uh, drugs, whatever. Not to say that, that we also helped, yeah. fund dictators in this yeah, area. Yeah, and we gave um, them the money, and, and we ooh, had, yeah. it was, we gave so them the weapons more than drones. Back, it's, so these drones are definitely yeah. not going to help. Well, um, and it's not even about drones. Like I said, um, you know, the United States has a history of, of, of supporting dictators, of supporting um, these governments that repress their own people, and, and they know that. They're not, they're not stupid. So which is one of the, a lot of the, anti-American sentiment that's existed for a long time, even before 9-11, and it's now being compounded um, because our counterterrorism is, like I said, not being as effective. I gotta move on. Hold on. <laughs> so I want to move beyond beyond the casualties so much more. Like I said, if you guys have any questions, we have just a few more minutes, but you can call us at 212-650-6903. And like I said, I want to move beyond casualties. Uh, you know, I, like I said, I found that drone strikes, they're, they're mediocre. Um, they're accuracy is highly debatable and the criteria that we have for choosing who's a terrorist and who is not is flawed and that's the biggest problem here it is flawed it's not that they don't work it's just that it is flawed and we're not really picking as many terrorists as we should um but more than the death and injury to innocent civilians is the anxiety and psychological trauma that civilian communities are subjected to drones hover 24 hours a day in communities in northwest pakistan and they strike homes vehicles public spaces without warning the presence terrorized women, men, and children who live their daily lives under these American drones. Um, the buzz of a distant propeller is a constant reminder of imminent death. And this is to people that really we know for a fact that they're not terrorists. Um, and some parents have chosen not to send their children to school because they have been traumatized by the sight of drones. And uh, like I said, in 2006, a drone strike hit a religious school in Pakistan, killing 82 people. I said 84, but it's 82. 69 of them were children. So children are now like kind of a little bit, oh, what if that happens to me? And uh, communities now shy away from gathering in large groups, um, such as funerals and weddings, for fear that they might attract attention of drones. Um, drones are real bombs also. They're not, like, we say, Obama likes to talk about their um, surgical precision. He says he uses that term all the time. But, um, they don't just hit one person or one vehicle. The blast radius is about 50 to 65 feet, and shrapnel becomes a projectile that can travel significant distances. So it's them and everybody around them. What's, what's shrapnel if you... It's just the metal pieces that come off a bomb or uh-huh. anything that you strike when, uh, when, it, when it explodes, and it just it becomes a projectile. It flies all over, and it usually like gets attached to people's heads and faces and body mm. parts, and usually a lot of people uh, who die from bomb attacks, they don't die from being burned. They die from uh, debris uh, just flying into their bodies. Um, you know, so usually those people, 50, 65 feet away, are civilians. Wow. Um, and, you know, sometimes they suffer disfiguring burns, wounds, limb amputations, as well as vision and hearing loss. Um, they also cause property damage, of course. Um, they often, and often severe economic and emotional hardships to the surviving relatives or injured victims. Um, and the U.S. authorities, this is kind of awkward, I didn't know, they have not made any coordinated effort to provide compensation to strike victims who were not terrorists in Pakistan, but they do have it in Afghanistan. So that's like, you know, that's a way, you know, you can say like, okay, fine, we're doing this wrong. We might have killed a few people. So you give them some compensation so that at least they can provide for their family. So do you think we should? I believe, yeah. It's the least we can do. I don't understand how killing 69 children and say that they're terrorists. I can see why they don't, though. Why, Stanley? Because we were technically. But we do it in Afghanistan. Yeah, but we were technically actually engaged in war in Afghanistan. So if we do damages and we, you know, we, we try to pay back the people. Like, all we're doing is saying, you know, there was some damages during war. If we do it in mm-hmm. Pakistan, we're admitting we're doing something wrong. Exactly. And they mm. won't that's, the di- that's the difference. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, it isn't big, but, um, and you know. I, 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 I still, you know, don't, I, 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 I still think it's a necessary evil, but I do, I do see the logic behind what they're yeah. doing. I mean, yes. like I said, the they, fallacy drones have it. had some success. No one is uh, disputing that. But um, the success can be <laughs> yeah, <laughs> debatable. Is, is it worth it? Um, is it worth you know, it? Like I said, the U.S. claims that drones are surgically precise, yet their precision is debated by the companies that develop the software used in the targeting. They themselves are like, no, we're not as precise as the government likes to say that we are. Um, they say that there's a bit of a delay 
between movement on the ground and the arrival of the video image via satellite to the drone pilot. Um, and even when precise casualties and damage, like I said, are not confined to one individual. Um, the statistic you were talking about, 74% of Pakistani consider the U.S. an enemy, which is up from 64% three years ago. Wow. Uh, and, so, yeah. I, I don't know. So, I guess my question would be, so where is this going to leave us in four more years when Obama's not here and we have um, people that already feel, you know, threatened and they feel like they're under attack and they become adults? Do you think that this will lead to widespread terrorism to it, a greater degree? I wouldn't say widespread, but I, I think it could definitely uh, plant a seed into people's mm -hmm. minds and that we are um, the enemy once again. We are the enemy. Um, and, well. then, and even more than that, there's actually real legal consequences to what we're doing. Um, we could be violating their um, their sovereignty, Pakistan sovereignty. Pakistan used to be um, for drones. Now they kind of backtrack and say like, no, 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 we feel like it's not a good idea anymore. Like it's working against them. Mm -hmm. If they backtrack, we have to stop. We have to say if we don't, um, then we're doing something illegal. It's like, you know, we're saying... Somebody said stop, and they didn't, and we're not uh, respecting them. Also, the UN Charter prohibits the threat or use of force by any one state against another unless the attacks are carried out with consent of the whole state, like I said. They said yeah. yes, but then they backtrack and they said, no, we don't want this anymore, but we continue. Mm -hmm. Or when the force is in self-defense, such as a response to an armed attack. So this is where it plays tricky, right? We're saying, well, 9-11. 9-11, 9-11, 9-11, and we keep using it. Um, and that we say that we're allowed to use drones in Pakistan because we're self-defense because of the attacks on 9-11. Um, also, we can claim that it's anticipatory. <laughs> Is that a right word? Did I say it okay? Yeah. Self-defense. <laughs> That's like that movie that came out with Tom Cruise where like they would arrest people based on their thought of killing someone. Exactly. So we can say like they might hurt us in the future, so we're going to... Um, <laughs> stop them from doing that. Oh, so there's God. reasons. Because they also, and, yeah, and like after 9-11, we, we came out with an authorization to use military force uh, two weeks after 9-11. And that says that all necessary and appropriate force against those nations, organizations, or persons, he, he the president, determines planned, authorized, committed, or aided the terrorist attacks that occurred on September 11, 2001. Like, we can basically... We can just say that we're at war with Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. After doing all this research, Patricia, I want to know, did you come up with either a conclusive solution or maybe do you have an opinion oh, on what we should do? I do not have a solution because I am not a counterterrorism expert. <laughs> okay. Uh, my solution would be uh, engineering-wise, uh, work on that precision, work on them being uh, literally more targeted, smaller. These missiles are big. They're big bombs. Perhaps if their um, the radius of explosion was not as large, less people would die. Perhaps if there's that, not that delay on the vi on the image, so that the target has time to move, and then we we probably are attacking somebody else. That could work. Um, so it just usually it's about the software that we use right now. It's not as great. Um, and like I said, many of the people in this area they have no idea what the wow. U.S. is. They only know that we are the people sending drones. Oh. It would be easy to convince them that we're the enemy. And recruit them into terrorist groups. Uh, we are setting ourselves back years, actually, with this strategy, according to a uh, report that I read. They were saying uh, they they studied this for a whole year, traveled all over, and said that most of the people there who do not feel safer, even though we claim that we're trying to make them safer. But uh, like I said, I hope that we can find a, a happy medium, and I hope that Obama stops saying that we do not kill civilians and really just start talking about the problem and finding solutions. That's all I want from him. That's all we need. Did you learn a lot, Selena? I did <laughs> learn a lot. I am mad at you, Mr. President. I still love you. Can I, can I quote, like you said, I, I love my president like I love my coffee, black with a little milk in it. <laughs> I got that from Patricia. Like, I still love him, but come on, Obama. Yeah, um, I don't. I still don't have a problem with drone attacks. I'm, it's uh, it's eye-opening, definitely, but Nobody until here, someone can give me a better... You, a better way to do things. I, yeah, I have I to support it. You, on, support it. I just told you work on that software. The problem well, is yeah. the software is not accurate enough, and we claim that it, we lie to the public. Obama lies and tells us it's accurate, it's precision, it's great, it's surgically precise, and Super. it's really not. So All come right. on, man, don't lie to us. Tell us the truth. <laughs> All Tell right. us that you gotta work on it. So real quick, we gotta go to break. So, but if that was fixed, would you be in support of drones? Yeah, why not? It's a counterterrorism effort. It's not my. I'm not. I'm. I don't support war ever. But hey, if it really is precise. I believe them. All right. Well, you guys heard it from Patty, the expert in drones you know me, and stuff. I'm an engineer. It's like math, but louder. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. All right, guys. We're going to go on a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be, we'll be right back with the news roundup yes, and some will. interesting news about iPhones. Really? Yep. UPS trucks already going hard, just pumping that gas. No one on the corner has swagger like us. 
WHCR 90.3 FM New York. The Community Emergency Response Team, or CERT of New York City, provides assistance in preparing and recovering from emergencies. CERT assists first responders and provides staffing for city shelters in response to disasters and extreme weather conditions. City College is one of the many locations for hurricane evacuation. CERT team members are local and live amongst the community, so they are always there for the people. CERT members will speak to any organization about emergency planning for the elderly, children, and the disabled. They offer workshops in creating go bags, emergency communication, and evacuation plans, and shelter-in-place kits. To learn how to prepare for emergencies, call South Harlem CERT at 917-406-6661. WHCR 90.3 FM, New York. are back. This is Let Your Voice Be Heard on WATR 90.3 FM radio. Shout out to my girl, Brittany Campbell. We just played her song, Call Me Baby. She's a really hot underground artist. Check her, her out. Voice. That was it was beautiful. really good. Voice. It was Brittany Campbell. Doesn't it have a nice sound to it? Like, this the nice, beat Nice, easy yeah. flow. Yeah. I, mean, I yes. don't know about calling her baby, but yeah, I like the song. <laughs> I'm speaking of nice, easy, fl- um, nice, easy flows. Nice, easy Thank easy. you, Patricia, for just breaking down drone strikes. You're welcome. I Even learned a lot. I think I, I did. I, I think it's a lot too. Thank you for challenging me on that. Like, what do you think we should do? I hadn't really thought about it because I feel like I don't know what to do. I just feel that they're not really uh, doing a good job. But like I said, you put me on the spot, and I thought like, you know what? If we fix that problem, that delay, that issue when they're not being so precise, they could really be an effective tool. That's true. And speaking of the Middle East and Afghanistan, I have some (laughs) more (laughs) horrifying news to break. By the way, this is the news roundup where you can share insightful, funny, silly, any type of news headline that you heard over the week. Let's talk about it right now. The number is 212-650-6903. I'm here to kill the mood by starting (laughs) off with this news story. In Afghanistan, this woman was killed after she refused a marriage proposal she's 15 years old her father actually said i don't want my daughter to get married this young and she was killed by relatives because the marriage proposal came from her cousin and what it was a it was a cousin and um after it was refused by her father the cousin and his uncle um attacked her while she was getting water from a well and they slit her throat throat, yeah oh my god horrifying it is can you believe that i'm sorry it is that that kind of news, that kind of yes. stuff that happens all over the world is why I'm so passionate about feminism and about helping women. Where well, people, you know, I'm I'm definitely passionate about helping women here, but we really need to think about a global way to help women. I'm like, women is one being a woman is one of the most vulnerable things that you can be in this entire world because you really are put in this position where you're not as important. Like your life is really not as valuable as men's lives and men in your life. And these men grow up with that really belief, like it's entrenched in them that they really are above them. That's how we raise them. That's how we and it's not just Afghanistan. This happens all over yes. the world. There was the uh, ex-mayor. She was uh, Mexican. I forgot which um, state it was from. I Michoacan, I believe she was. But um, she was kidnapped twice 
by gang rebels, by, you know, drug lords, because she talks against them and she always preaches against them and she wants to make her state a better state in Mexico. And uh, finally, she was kidnapped and she was mutilated. She was raped. It, she was found dead and her body was like all torn open and cut into pieces. Whoa. They're, they're, yeah. They're trying to send a message that's like, you know, you do not stand up against us. And this is the third time that she was kidnapped. The first two times she escaped and she was hurt. Like this picture is the first time and she's like, they were they slit open like, her abdomen to oh. try to get her organs out. And she survived. And the second time. Wow. Like, she same, survived? Yeah. Twice she survived these horrendous things. The third time she didn't. And uh, like I said, she was mutilated. It was horrible. But let's go to something a little yeah <laughs> yeah I, 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 I don't really feel like being mortified at 11 in the morning yes about the football player that also shot his girlfriend no oh, oh wow. my god we were not going but he's from long island well, that's not kansas what city chiefs yeah let's not let's oh he's my. from the kansas Sh- city chiefs he and is. um stanley do you know his full name i, I forgot it I you actually watch that. football okay stanley i'm expecting you to come through but yeah but he he shot his girlfriend and then went to the practice facility and shot himself in the head in front of his coach mind you he has they have a newborn baby mm-hmm Three month old girl. You know, this gives me inspiration, Stanley. Feminist topic next week. I don't care what you say. Absolutely not. <laughs> yes, we All right? are. We, no, God. I'm this sorry. Isn't I'm, a feminist this topic. is not you. This is me being mortified from the first three things we talked about can in this roundup. Oh, Let's talk about this after the show in the post show <laughs> wrap up. Maybe we can slide. I don't. Oh, my God. Anyways, I have some good news amongst You're all of that horribleness. Mad week. All right. Um, iPhones. Yes. They are now going to be selling them without a contract, which means you can buy an iPhone without getting a plan, and it's unlocked, which means you can use it for any carrier, wow. which is going to be great news for all of you Simple Mobile, Boost Mobile, Metro PCS people who want an iPhone but can't afford that good old two-year contract. Okay. You can join us one percenters ah. and be fancy with the swoop swoosh in you the You know, iPhone. I'm against this because it eliminates the exclusivity attached know, right? to it. Now no longer That's what rich people feel- say about being able to afford to eat. You're right. I'm not, I know. This is my right to eat caviar, not yours. I know. But hey, welcome welcome aboard, Boost Mobile. Oh. No, this, this this is a really good thing, and here's why. Cheap. Because, you know, it'll... it'll I don't it'll, like poor people. It'll drive... The- <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Kind of. it's, it's not good for the carriers who had the plans, because like that was one of like the, the appealing pieces of exactly. coming to iPhone. But now... Along with doing that, they're like all the materials for iPhone that come with it, the covers, the headsets and everything, it's going to drive those prices down. The reason those prices are so high is because most people are, you know, perceive iPhone and all, those, all these other cool phones for like the merchandise to come from the, the phone stores. Right. So if that's your only source besides the guy, the random guy in front of the Apple store who sells it from his cart. You know, you're going to go there that's and they can uncle. charge. Sorry, sorry. Right. Tell Julio I said I'm sorry. <laughs> but, um, you know. They can, they can raise the price as much as they want, but now you're opening the market. Yeah. You're opening the market. So, like, those of you who have iPhones and want to get that chargeable cover, That's that true. costs 60 bucks at Ooh. the Apple store. You hey, know, or, or 80 at, like, the AT&T or Sprint store. You can get it for 30 on Amazon. Wow. You know what? They should work on the headphones. I thought I lost mine. And you know how they have the mic and you can change the music, like, from the headphones? And then I lost them, and I wanted to go buy them from Amazon or somewhere else. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. You have to go to the Apple store and buy them. And I was like, oh, man. Then I then I found another pair, but thank you. But yeah. still, I would love if they sell those somewhere else. Yeah, I haven't used Apple official bucks. headphones in years. I just go get some headphones from the store for 10 bucks. 99 cent store. Or go to Radio Shack because they insure them. If your headphones break and it's like an internal thing and it's not ripped up, you can return it and get a brand new one. Right oh, wow. there and there, yeah. Well, um, something that you can't get a brand new thing of. Oh, God. Something else sad? No, no, no. It's actually pretty oh. hysterical. I don't know if Go any, ahead. Say news. I don't know if anyone was following the um, Romney face tattoo man. Um, <laughs> during the campaign, he was actually paid $5,000 to get the Romney Ryan ticket logo tattooed on his forehead. Mm-hmm. And political asked him... If they if Romney loses, will you be you know will you be regretful about getting this tattoo on your face? And he was like, no. So yes, he, he fu- yes. Now he's regretting it. In the, initially, he didn't regret it. You know what made him regret his face tattoo was the fact that Romney said that the only reason why Obama won was because he offered different constituencies gifts. Yeah. That is what not forty percent, not the forty seven percent comment, not the ten thousand dollar bet, but when he said Obama won because he offered black people, minorities, Latinas, women you gifts. Didn't, you did not get your gift back? I didn't even get my little gift well, bag. Yeah, no, it had a, an Obama phone. It had a, <laughs> yeah. a welfare check. Yes. Uh, slut pills. 
some I mean, contraception. contraception. Yeah. <laughs> like, Definitely. Oh, all there. What Obama. No, no. Mr. Obama, if you are listening, I did not get my slut pills or my Obama phone. <laughs> and I, you are going to address me. And for you guys who are listening, I wrote an uh, open letter to Mr. Obama telling him I did not get my gifts and I voted for him. And I asked for three things. Pay off my student loans. Fire Kristen Stewart from ever acting again and pay off my student loans. I want this to happen. My Christmas wish list to Obama. Black Friday passed. There's no reason I shouldn't get these on December 25th. I thought I'm you upset celebrated about Kwanzaa. Whatever. When's Kwanzaa? Umoja. I don't know. Oh, I, mean, t- I know. I'm sorry. I don't know. We're going to tick off someone today with that comment just now. But I mean, Hanukkah. <laughs> Hanuk- oh, my God. My friend accidentally spelled Kwanzaa like incorrectly. He spelled, but you know, you know, you know. Us minorities spell Kwanzaa wrong. It's K W A N Z A or K A W A N Z A. This person spelled it Q U A N Z A. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty insulting. That's a that's, that's a that's a and then I was talking to my friend. I told it to Dustin, and Dustin was like, "Anyone could have made that mistake." And I was like, "No, Dustin. Only a white person would make yes. that mistake." <laughs> that's true. Like, I have, wow. I have, I've had friends spell my name wrong, and I'm a Q. I'm a well, yeah, because your Kwanzaa. name is actually Kwanzaa. Yeah, yeah but. Kwanzaa. I'm gonna name and my. They spell it with a Q. I'm oh, gonna wow. name my so kid Win- Winter it. Solstice. <laughs> I'm gonna start, I'm gonna become a pagan and I'm gonna celebrate Winter Solstice for, instead of Christmas. I'm gonna name my son Independence Day. No okay. one can get it wrong. You guys are going crazy. And speaking about going crazy, Glenn Beck, one of our favorite Yo. crazy loony conservatives that seem like he fell off the face of the planet, is back. <laughs> And he's selling yes. a toy. It's called the Obama and PP toy. Look, yeah. this is this is what this Beck is, is doing. Disgusting. He, well, he, he's Sorry. actually um, protesting a form of art that someone made where they uh, depict Obama on a crucifix, like Jesus. Oh, that's a bit much. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty controversial. So what he's saying is fine. If this is art, I'm going to pee in a jar and put Obama, a, a, a Obama statue of a, Obama duplication. Like a little toy. Yeah, a little <laughs> toy. A little like toy. A head. But the thing is, the toy had the American flag on yeah. it. So he put it in this jar, and it looks like it's in pee, but then he later confessed that it's beer. So it's like this, but it's still, the toy is that still called cool. Obama I PP, and I think it's going for $25,000. What? I can't, that, I would get that. Um, for $25,000, Stanley? No, not for $25,000. The it's artwork like $5. that you were talking about with Obama on the crucifix, I didn't know, I didn't think it was that one. I thought that he was just making light of the other one, that it's like a urinal turned upside down, and they call it the Virgin Mary. Oh. The, I thought that, that was the one he was like, uh, but, but it could, could be, be either. Yeah, it could be <laughs> either. Because that's what I just heard the crucifix one, but but anything could have set him off. I don't fully get the Virgin Mary one. I read mine on Twitter, so so but well, you know how urinals turn upside down, right? And if you turn it around, it looks like that shape. That oh yeah, Virgin Mary and Child. I see what they did there. Yeah. Um. No, I don't. I'm not mad at Glenn Beck for this. It's freedom of expression. If someone could put Obama on a cross or Michelle Obama naked with her, he's not an artist. With tickle bitties out there. I mean, why can't? He, but he's, he's mocking it. He's not doing it to make so, art. Like, that's his freedom of speech. As long as he's not saying Obama's an Honestly, N-word. Honestly, I feel bad for the guy. Come on. If he has to go through that so he can get some people to pay attention to him, that's yeah. kind of sad. That's what, I, that's what he wants. He's a sad like. little case. He's not trying to be an artist. He's just like, uh, let me do something to get attention. Basically. Beck has done and said, said and done dumber things. Remember that time he almost killed frogs? Back in 2009. Oh, I don't know God. if anyone else remembers that, but it was, it was hilarious. Remember that time Rush Limbaugh went to the hospital and people were tweeting that they hope he died and ended up being gas? <laughs> it was, what is oh wrong God, with that's us? That's horrible. I wouldn't wish that on It is. And then, like, <laughs> Rush Limbaugh is having a heart attack. Then it turned out to be, like, just gas. And then oh he had to explain goodness. it on his radio show later. Oh, my God. Uh, you guys, that's crazy. Do you remember Mona Tahawi? She's a journalist and an activist. And she defaced one of those posters, those um, anti-jihad posters that people had. Mm-hmm. So she this week, she I, I mean, I talk to her all the time on Twitter because, you know, we're besties. We are, apparently. Um, and, uh, you know, she was going to court. And she actually, they, they, they gave her a plea deal. And she didn't take it because she was like, no, I stand for what I did. If I take a plea deal, that means that I say that I'm guilty. Mm. So she thinks she, she wants to go to court and she wants to defend herself. And she wants to talk about it. And she says she wants to use it as an experience to talk about hate. I was like, I want to take the plea deal. Maybe she can experience prison afterwards because that's probably what's going to happen. I don't know. But they want to make her pay $800 because apparently she broke a $800 Gucci um, sunglasses from the woman that was attacking her. Wow. Speaking of Gucci sunglasses, by the way, guys. Really? Really? Yes. Ricky Martin is trying to get his own sitcom on NBC. Yes. For what? Here's exactly what he says. NBC Latino, you mean? No, NBC, (laughs) NBC, or Mexica. He wants to get a sitcom based on dark humor of some sort of important issue. 
okay. he's writing the script. That's exactly what he says. Oh, that's that's all he says. Oh. Look, I, he has a he has a lo- he has a following. He People does. are gonna watch it just to see Ricky Martin and I his would. new little. Yeah, I'll definitely check that out too. Shout I, out to Ricky Martin. I love him. I, I don't know yeah. what the show is about. Shake yet, a bon bon, <laughs> shake a bon bon. And he adopted two Can baby boys. Oh, that's Adorable. perfect, Patricia. Speaking of two baby boys, are they, for instance, twins? There's been a study that shows that sibling rivalry goes all the way into like back into the womb. It's been confirmed, wow. and there's video footage of twins fighting inside the mother's womb to come that's out hilarious. first. That's <laughs> hilarious! Yes, <laughs> like smack, smack. <laughs> yeah, like Aww. It's, that's Aww. pretty cool. Those that kids are gonna cool. hate each other. I would love other. to have twins, but you know they make you like eighty pounds heavier, so. I oh, don't know. that's like a lot. <laughs> That is a lot. Speaking of twins. Really? No. Uh-oh. <laughs> that could get dirty. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you going to tell about what you did this weekend and where you were, Selena? No, I am not. Really? And I'm going to take the pictures on Facebook, too. <laughs> <laughs> so no one knows. Um, I will destroy that evidence. What I did want to talk about is something much more G-rated. That's Bo Obama, the first dog. He is starring in his own little Christmas video. I think everyone should check it out on whitehouse.gov. It's adorable. And it was definitely worth a mention during the news roundup. Really? Bo Obama. Bo Obama. That's yes, the first dog. The He's first a rare dog. breed Portuguese water dog. Yeah, let's talk about something that he matters. Should, he should have Stanley! a Stanley! It's <laughs> Christmas. Dog He's the most important dog in the world. I celebrate Kwanzaa. Thank you very much. Ooh, exactly. Leah. Winter oh, sauces. That's, that's <laughs> not how you say it. Whatever, you Kwanzaa. You don't know Kooji anything. Kooji Jacalia. Kooji oh. Jacalia, whatever. As I was saying. Gucci? Gucci. Gucci. Gucci <gasps> Jacalia. Oh, Gucci Kate Gucci. Spade. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> you know, one time I almost got like a week off because I told my supervisor that oh, I was celebrating okay. Kwanzaa. That's, that's, it's so that's bad. Ridiculous. It was April. <laughs> <laughs> Stan, look at you using the race car to get you, out of work. You, you, you should like. I'm not even gonna say. It. I'll tell you guys later. But like, my supervisor is so. Obl- my old supervisor, he, he used to be so oblivious to certain things. So I'll be like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. He'll be like, hey, do you guys really do that? And I'm like, what? Do you guys? Do you what guys? do you mean by that? Yeah. I'm gonna be like, it's Black New Year's. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> For real, take advantage. Yeah, I'm gonna tell them on the inauguration day. Um, this is the no, um, you can. This is the birth of Obama, which, <laughs> which is also a Black holiday, and he's the king of Black people. So I can't come to work today. <laughs> That would be so I hilarious. Like, you can be like, you, you know, like Chinese New Year. Yeah, it's Black New Year. Like, what is there a problem? And you kind of look at them like with a really, really straight face. Yeah, and I was make, sh- I make sure I wear my scully and not shave because people cross the street when they see me. Oh, it's, it really makes me then. sad. But I'm gonna use it to my advantage when I ask for that day off. Try not being black. Yeah, just just, just try I'm one on day. It. I'm working on it. I've read seventeen thousand books on how to be white, and it's still nothing's <laughs> changed. It didn't work. No. Reading books would kind of turn you white, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's not working yet. <laughs> All right, so if you are a friend of our, what Patricia said, and we don't get canceled, you can give us a call at 212-650-6903. Again, that number is two one two six five zero six nine zero three. Selena, drop it like it's hot. And I'm going to drop probably like the last piece of news. Go ahead. You're good today. I don't know. I'm not even talking. Go ahead. Um, This man, he spent his whole life savings building a modern day Noah's Ark in preparation for the mine apocalypse, oh. which is 12-21-12. So if you guys are going to go into wow. hiding, it's 12-21-12. The guy who built the Ark, he is an, oh, taking an open invitation for anyone that would like to join him. Any but it's arc. not complete. Is it fire? Well, he's kind of late. This Second end of the world is supposed to be brimstone oh, and fire, fire oh. not water. So I did anyone get the hope, memo? Hopefully, it's fireproof. Oh, okay. Maybe, yeah. Maybe it has like fire protection, the tire resistance, whatever it is, the fireman fabric that they use. I don't know. I mean, I'm not really interested. I don't like boats, but <laughs> but hey, he, <laughs> he spent like I think it was like over ten thousand oh dollars. So that was gosh. pretty crazy. But um, speaking of that, we I should think have I'm, an apocalyptic show. Definitely. So uh, speaking of apocalypse and things coming to an end. This was the end of the news roundup, but Let Your Voice Be Heard has Good not one. ended. We are coming right back with Lisa Bloom. She is a legal analyst on avo.com. That's A V V O.com. She is also a TV host, a TV personality. Um, she has a long list of credentials. We're going to speak to her about the Stand Your Ground law. And Jordan Davis, if you don't know who Jordan Davis is, some people call him like the Trayvon Martin Part 2. And I'll explain why when you we do. get back Only from you. this break. Only no, no, I'm not, Stanley. You look this up on the blogosphere. Lisa Bloom is awesome, and she's an author, by the way, too. We're going on a break. Sorry, I cut myself off. We're going on a break. <laughs> See you soon. WHCR 94.3 FM, New York.